In this video, we're going to make the sword, and in the next few videos, we're gonna make the rest of the sword in stone scene. First, we're gonna start by tabbing to edit mode, and we're going to select all, and we're just gonna scale this down, and maybe scale in Z, and scale in Y. And we just wanna make this about the dimensions of the blade, so we wanna be pretty thin, and maybe a bit longer. So this will be our blade. So next we're going to hit control R and we will put an edge loop down the middle and I'm just gonna select this face and then hit delete or X and then delete all the vertices so that we have half the blade. And then I'm going to mirror it. You could just use the menu or quick favorites to put mirror in there. And I'll turn on clipping and I'll change the axis since it was the wrong one. Now I'll go and hit 2 to go into edge mode. Now I find that when working with long objects like this, that the navigation isn't great, so I prefer to turn on N, lock the 3D cursor, and I'll move the 3D cursor here, and I can rotate around here to edit it easily. Now I'll select this, hit G, Z, move this up to make the tip, and G, Y, Maybe make it a little bit more narrow. Then I'll go and hit three. Then I'll select this face, hit delete faces. And then I'll select these two with the shift select to select multiple. And hit I to inset. And then I'm gonna go change the setting and turn off boundary so that it doesn't use the boundaries. And then I'll adjust it to make it thinner. Maybe there or so. Maybe a little bit less. I can go and select these two faces. Hit E, I'm going to right click to cancel it and hit S to scale and X to make it on the X axis. I'm just going to make this thinner because you don't want your sword to be too heavy so you often have this little cut in the blade. And then I'm going to go here and turn on wireframe and shift select these and G on the Z to make it go into that more. Then I'll go and select these two, and G on the Y to make it go in and bevel like that too. I think on this sword, I don't want to have this much at this side, so I might make it a little bit thinner. So I'll just G, Y to move it in a little. Now I'm gonna go and select this, shift select, and select all these, and then Hit S, X, 0 to make it have no thickness. And then I'll select all with A and then hit Alt M to merge by distance. And that will combine these vertices. Now I can just round this off by Alt selecting that to select that loop. And I'll hit Control B to bevel that out. And I'll scroll up on my wheel, my scroll wheel to add more loops. And maybe I will... Select a few of these and hit GG to make this bevel a little bit longer. Just slide them out. So that smooths that out. Then I'll hit Shade Smooth. Turn on Auto Smooth. And then I want this part right here to be sharp, I think. So I'll go and Alt Select that and hit Control E. Mark Sharp. And then that will be added as Sharp as well as what it did automatically. So now we have the blade of the sword. Now we can hit Shift C to back, go back to center, then Shift A to add another cube. And this guy will be the guard. So I'll scale it down with S, scale it down on the X axis, and then on the Z axis, then maybe scale it on the Y axis to make it a bit thicker, hit GZ. Move it up there at the top. And then I'll hit Control R to add a loop. I will add more loops. Maybe I will scale these in with Y. And maybe I will GZ that. And maybe add another loop here and here. And I will maybe hit 3 and select these two. GZ like that. And I think this could be maybe a little bit thinner. So I'll select that loop and move it down a little. Next, I will go and select these as well as these all with shift and alt click. 
and then hit control B to round that out a bit. And now we have the main guard piece, but maybe I will add a bevel modifier. Make it a little bit smaller of a bevel. I could either add more segments to make it smoother after hitting shade smooth to make it more smoother and make it shade better, but I'm gonna leave it like that. this and I'm gonna have it set up to be low poly for maybe like a video game or something. And maybe I'll use the weighted normal to improve the shading there. But I need to turn on auto smooth to allow that to work. So now it looks like it's a higher poly bevel without being one. Next, we're gonna need a handle on our sword. So I will hit shift C to center the 3D cursor out again, shift A, I'll add another cube. You could also use a cylinder. And I'll scale this down, GZ. And then I'm gonna delete these two faces by selecting them and deleting faces. Scale and Z, make it longer. Move the 3D cursor here so that I can navigate around it easily. And then hit scale X to make it thinner. Scale Y. And then I might just go add some loop cuts here, then select them and scale on the Y axis to make it a bit thicker here. And then maybe I will go and hit control R to have a center piece since I'm going to think of this as a two handed sword. So there's often a little bit of a center where the hands are separated. And I'm going to make this a little bit fancy by hitting control B to bevel this. And I'll add maybe this many loops so that I can then select these and scale them up a little. I think that looks fancy. And I'll maybe select this and scale it down a little. And then I could apply the same bevel and other modifiers on here by hitting auto smooth. And then I can go and keep this selected and then shift select this and then hit control L to make links, copy the modifiers. So now we got this beveled out. Next, we can just go and hit Shift C to center the 3D cursor out again, and then add another cylinder. I guess we could go with 32 to make it nice and smooth. And then I can tab into edit mode, scale it down. Maybe we want to go 16 if you want this to be less polys for maybe a video game or something. And I'll just move this up, and then rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees, and scale on X and make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll have a bigger bevel here. Maybe I'll select these two, hit I to inset, and then E, and then I'll just hit S to scale it down a little bit. And maybe I'll select these loops and hit Control B to bevel it out a little bit too. And it shaves smooth. Now we got the sword modeled out so we can work on materials now. Now I'm gonna go with a mostly procedural setup First, I'm gonna go save real quick. Now I'm gonna go to the shading tab, select my blade, and this will be called metal. I'll turn metallic up to one to make it look like metal. And then I'm just gonna select the rest of these and then finish it by selecting the sword. Hit Control L, make links materials to give them the same materials. For the handle, I'm gonna want another material for the grip, but I'll worry about that later. Next for the material, I'm going to want to add a noise texture and a color ramp to get started. And I'm just going to plug that into the, plug the factor into the factor, plug the color into the base color. And you can see that it's kind of stretched out. So maybe I might go look for a coordinate, a texture coordinate, and I'll use the object, which will wrap it around this. Now I'm going to lower the scale to make it less noticeably tiled for this main darker portion that I'm going to have. And then I might go ahead and duplicate this and then search for mix RGB. And I can mix between that and a smaller amount and a smaller amount so that I can get not just the bigger changes in colors, but some smaller changes. Maybe something like that might look cool. And then I could also maybe adjust and play around with it with the color ramp a little, maybe make this 
a little less dark. Just play around with it until you get something that you like. Maybe I might make this one get a little bit of a kind of slightly brownish tint so that it looks more dirty. And then we can also duplicate this color ramp and then this can also become our roughness value. Now you're going to want it to be close sir, to a darker one. So I'm going to keep this at white, go a little bit darker because darker will be closer to smooth. I'm going to keep them relatively close to each other. I think maybe that looks okay. Now for this, I'm going to add another one. I'm going to choose metal again, and then I'm just going to hit this five here to duplicate that material and I'll call this grip. And then I'm going to hit three and choose these, assign it to the grip part. And then I'm going to turn off metallic. And what you might notice here is that the bevel modifier didn't place it perfectly. So I can actually go ahead and apply the bevel and then go and fix this by loop selecting these and going back to materials and selecting grip. And now it should be fixed. So I can now adjust the color of my grip, make it more of a brown color here as well. And then I might want it to be less smooth than this, so I can make these brighter colors. And then what I could do, well, maybe make a little bit more variation in this, bring that up. Darken that. Now we see a bit more variation in that. Then I could maybe add even a bump map. Bump. Plug that into normal. And then maybe I'll use a smaller one here. Uh, oh, I want this to be changed to factor. Let me go change that in the middle part too. So maybe now I could uh, plug the factor of this smaller one into the height and see what happens. That's a bit on the crazy side, so I can tone that down a bit. And then now it's a little bit rougher. And then maybe we want some, say, runes on this blade. So what I could do is go to texture paint. Well, first I should go to UV editing and select everything and then U. And I'll use just smart UV project to be quicker. You can obviously get better UVs than this, but I want to be quick. So we've got the texture paint, add base color, and I'll call this emissive. And I'm going to have some glowing ruins on this. So I'm going to go back to shading. And I don't want this to be plugged into base color. I want it to be plugged into emission. And then I can go back to texture paint. And then you can see that if I paint on here, that I might see it on these other materials. So I can go back to shading and I can hit four to duplicate this and call it metal, maybe underscore blade. And then on the regular metal, I can just remove the emissive. So I can go to texture paint and then I can go to render. And as you can see, the entire thing is white. So it makes the entire thing emit white. So I can go to black and then quickly fill this in with black. So now of course I can go to the brush, choose white, make the brush smaller, and then I can paint some ruins on this material. As you can see, since it was mirrored, you're going to get it on both sides. So what I can do is I can simply go to here, go to object mode, apply, go to Edit mode, U, Smart UV Project to project those 
then go to texture paint and then draw the ruins on it. I'll just make some random shapes that look kind of like ruins. A line there. And maybe that works well for my blade. So I can go back into shading. And as you notice, they don't really look like they're glowing. So what I can do is I can go to my render settings for Eevee, turn on bloom. And I might go ahead and turn on some other settings that I want, like ambient inclusion and screen space reflections. But for right now, I'll turn on bloom. And this will basically make anything that's brighter than 100% blur and look kind of glowy. But this isn't bright enough yet, so I can go and add math node. And then I can go to multiply and do like 100. And now I can see that it's glowing. And now maybe I might want to go ahead and change this to be a different color. So I might change it to blue, pink, whatever I want. I'll change it to blue. I think this will look nice for the scene. And now we have a fantasy sword for our sword and shield scene. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. Thank you. Make sure to watch the next videos to learn how to make the rest of the scene.